Growing up, I had really bad self-confidence. It started when I was about eight years old and it got really bad during my middle and high school years. Almost everybody either bullied me or treated me like shit. And actually looking back, I feel like I could have been a lot more confident. And to be honest, the only time that I remember actually being confident was when I was dancing. Basically when I was nine, I started becoming obsessed with Michael Jackson and I started copying all his dance moves. And all of a sudden, by the time it was like middle school, I became really good at dancing like Michael Jackson. And I would notice, it would always be the girls that asked me to dance for them. I swear to God, every time there was a high school dance, it's like a switch flipped off in my mind, where all of a sudden I went from unconfident to like really freaking confident. I was like literally grabbing every single girl and getting them to dance with me. It was freaking awesome. Like I felt like a superhero. Yet, throughout every other aspect of my life, I was extremely unconfident. You know, I was quiet in class. I didn't really speak all that much. I wasn't really talking to any of the other kids unless I was spoken to. So how could somebody who's so confident in this one area of their life be so unconfident in literally every other aspect of their life? Number one, go back to your childlike roots. Typically, a lot of us are trying to become <laughs> or for you women, more <laughs> women than women. But I recently came across a video by psychiatrist Dr. Kenoja, also known as Dr. K. And what he said is confidence is actually the default state. What you gain over time is insecurity. And in order to be confident, you actually have to let go of all the insecurity that you built up over the years and years of living and return back to child. Think about a child. A child's default state is actually confidence. Like a one-year-old is like babbling, like they don't care what people think, like they're just, they can't even talk, they can't walk, they can't feed themselves, they can't even use the bathroom, they don't know how to wipe their ass, they can't do anything. They're not alphas for sure, and yet they're supremely confident. As you get older, you become less and less confident when you get to your teenage years and maybe your early 20s, sometimes even your 30s, a lot of people will be extremely unconfident, even though they've technically have made more money or certain job, maybe graduated high school, college, all those things, those are technically achievements, right? But a lot of them do not have the same confidence they had when they were kids. Kids aren't trapped inside their heads saying, oh, look at my SpongeBob watch. That's not gonna cut it, that looks cheap. I need something more expensive. If they like SpongeBob, they're gonna wear SpongeBob and they don't care about impressing others. You hear some people don't like kids. Maybe they don't like kids because the kids have more confidence than them. Confidence isn't necessarily something you finally get once you accomplish all your goals. It's just a state of mind. Now, what I'm not saying is, oh, what you do and your actions and your goals and if you accomplish your goals doesn't matter or have any bearing on your confidence. It definitely does. But you could also achieve, you know, your goals and all those other things and still not be confident. And yet you can not achieve those things yet and still be confident. And oftentimes in order to achieve your goals, you have to have some level of confidence. Say you write on your goal journal, I'm gonna become a dentist. Well, at least in that moment, you had confidence that you can eventually become a dentist. If you did not have the confidence that you're eventually gonna become a dentist, you would not write down as your goal, I'm gonna become a dentist, right? So if you absolutely had no confidence to do anything, you wouldn't be able to do anything. If you're one of those people who are unconfident and you think, oh, once I achieve X, Y, and Z, I'll finally have this thing called confidence. No, that's not how it works. And that's like the biggest lie that's ever been perpetrated through society as we know it. You need to be confident right now. Now, of course, achieving your goals will help with confidence, but oftentimes whatever it took to achieve those goals took confidence as well. So it's just, an increasing amount of confidence to finally hit your goals and all of a sudden you hit your goals but you still had confidence behind all of the other steps that it took to achieve those things. Now again, it doesn't mean living up to your own standards for a living doesn't help with confidence. It absolutely does. But I think we have the cause and the effect reversed. 
if you were actually confident, you would have the confidence to do the things you know you need to do. Doing or not doing is all a choice that we make. We oftentimes don't do the things that we know we need to do because we're unconfident that we will be able to do the action that we need to do. Say you woke up tired. You're unconfident in your ability to do the gym exercise because you're tired, yet you would be able to. You're not gonna die if you're tired and go to the gym. That basically means we have to be confident first. And you may be saying, oh, that's some great advice. Just be confident. I'm in this dark abyss where everything's horrible and, and everything's dark and I have no fun in my life and everybody hates me and I'm just horrible. Every, everything just sucks. You have to be the main character in your life. And I know that's considered cringe these days, but if you're not a narcissist, you probably don't have to worry about being a narcissist. Have you ever seen a main character, say they went up to a girl and um, they asked her out and she rejected him and then the entire class laughed at him. What main character would be like, okay, well, I guess I'll never ever talk to a girl again. I'll just be depressed for the rest of my life. No main character. That would be a shitty freaking movie, right? You have to apply that same mentality to you. What would a main character do? If, they, if the worst freaking thing possible happened, would they just sit in agony and misery and cry over themselves? No. They would brush themselves off and then, you know, get back running to focus on the plot, their goal, no matter what obstacle comes in their way. You have to have the exact same mentality. That means you have to be confident in your own special way. Doesn't matter if you, the main character, are cocky and, you know, a Chad, or your main character is, you know, a little bit more humble. You're still the main character and you better act like it. So what you need to do is build some character, some main character. Authenticity is true confidence. Now, if we're talking about true inside and out confidence, the people who are most confident are the people who are most secure in who they are. They don't care as much as everybody else about what other people think about them. If, if we're actually talking about like true confidence that people pick up on, there's people who, who don't have millions of dollars, aren't super beautiful and, what, and whatnot, yet they still attract a lot of people towards them. They do that because they're comfortable with themselves. To say that only jocks and like athletes get confidence is mind bogglingly stupid. It's accessible to anybody who lives by their own purpose and accepts themselves for who they are. But Tobias, I'm shy. I have no personality. That's not true. You have a personality. You can be confident. You just have rejection sensitivity. Somewhere, somehow, and somewhere, someone disapproved of something you did. Maybe it was an opinion. Maybe it was an action. It was probably your parents. If they saw anything that you did or what somebody else did and they didn't approve, they would be very judgmental. They would be like, you stop spending time drawing in class, okay? You're supposed to do your schoolwork. There's no place for artistic talent in the world. Now, they may not have said that, but that's how you felt because they told you not to draw class. That's rejection sensitivity. When those same parents could be like, okay, well, how about you do both? You know, you should still pay attention to school, but you should also, you know, pursue your uh, artistic endeavors. That kid would not have rejection sensitivity. Um, definitely when you're like one years old compared to four, four years old, you maybe had a little bit of rejection and that just got uh, way, way worse. As we grew older, we became more aware of the opinions and expectations of others. And we started to sacrifice our own wants and needs and our ability to express ourselves. We started to hide that in search of being what other people wanted us to be. And when you notice the most beloved people, the most confident people, the people that people tend to love are the people who don't shy their own personalities from other people. They embrace their personalities. They embrace what they like. They embrace what they don't like to other people instead of just trying to please everybody. This may not be true in like a corporate environment, but in terms of like, you know, person to person relationship, people like authenticity. People like people who aren't afraid to show them who they really are. As long as they're not like a, you know, a murderer rapist or something like that, you know, or pedophile. But the positive things that you may view as negative because maybe some person didn't like it. True confidence comes from being comfortable in our own skin and embracing our own unique personalities, strengths, and even our weaknesses. It's okay to say, hey, I'm not super good at this. Instead of being like, oh, I'm not good at this. I hate myself. I'm not good enough because I'm not good at this one thing. Be like, okay, I'm not good at this one thing, but I'm good at things that I like to be good at. 
Now, if you wanna be good at something and you're not good at it, then that's on you to focus on that thing that you wanna get better at. But if it doesn't really matter to you, and it only matters to you in that one second, then you should just embrace that that is your weakness. If you're bad at tennis and your friends are like, hey, let's play tennis, you don't have to be like, oh shit, I suck, I have to get better at this. Does it really matter that you suck at tennis if you're good at brain surgery? Unless you wanna get better at tennis, then go ahead and get better at tennis. But being bad at tennis should not make you feel worse about yourself if you truly don't really care that much about tennis. You should just have fun with the tennis session with your friends.